Hi all, welcome to my shop. I want to talk to, to you today about something that's not quite wood turning, but it's wood turning related. Uh, I've turned a couple of chess sets for my granddaughters and I'm, I was a chess board and a chess storage box behind, so I thought I'd better start playing catch up and do some flat work. So I made this uh, chess board as shown here and made this box as shown here. Uh, I'm pleased with them and it kind of reminds me of the uh, why I like wood turning so much. Although there, um, it's, it was a lot of satisfaction in making them, it's just so many steps. I thought I'd share some of those with you here through a series of photographs as I make the chess board and the chess box. Now, the other thing that kind of spurred me on is, uh, I don't know how many of y'all have watched the Queen's Gambit uh, series on Netflix. Wonderful uh, little mini-series, I think uh, six or seven uh, episodes where it shows this uh, beautiful red-headed uh, uh, prodig chess prodigy and it's really spurred a, a tremendous amount of interest in chess worldwide since it came out I believe uh, last October during maybe because of COVID people staying home playing games with families but a lot of interest in a lot of interest in 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 chess uh, also uh, the making a chess set has been a popular demonstration for uh, remote uh, interactive remote meetings with with clubs because I think spurred on to some extent by that that series so I thought well instead of just making chess men out of random pieces of wood and different different designs I thought I'd, if I'd concentrate on one design and keep working at it during the demonstration after a year or so I'd have most of the pieces turned so I just I decided on this Baku 61 which was a set designed for the Baku 1961 International Chess uh, Federation tournament in Azerbaijan, the city of Baku in Azerbaijan on the Caspian Sea. And it's it's a Russian design. I like Russian designs, and it, I like this because uh, it's fairly elegant, but a rather rather simple design. So I started turning those. So let me walk you through some of the uh, series of of steps it it took to turn this, make this box and this this chessboard. Someone had given me a large uh, sticker of walnut, so I thought that's what I would cut up. And I used some scraps of uh, a baby baby crib uh, that I think was probably maple. And then I used another large piece of maple scrap that someone had given me. And a scrap of MDF that I had around for the base, for the substrate. And here I glued some Luan mahogany on the bottom to give it a little better better appearance. It's always good to start with a design. I had some sketches of where I was trying to go with the box and and the board. Uh, pulled out my, my router, pulled out my planer. I had to plane the boards, all of them. I had to cobble together a dust uh, collection setup since I don't regularly use this planer and, and joiner. So I, I planed these thin strips and, and glued them up I first glued them up in sets of four and and then clamped them. You can't have too many clamps. And then after I finished with a four, I grouped them in, the, the two sections together and glued them up. After that, I started scraping them to try to get the get rid of any glue and smooth and even the the surface. I then cut the strips crossways and then reversing every other one, started gluing them up on the substrate, trying to keep them flat, which is a challenge. After that, I did lots and lots of uh, sanding. Lots and lots of sanding. I got some other trim that I cut up and, and routed to put around the edge. Here's my router set up with a little sacrificial uh, uh, fence to, to develop this profile for the very edge. And then I had some small strips I glued up around the, the end uh, of the piece. After I put it together, I used this little jig to cut these little miter, miter slots to help hold it together a little bit. I probably did four coats of hand, uh, hand lacquer and then I finished it up. I uh, sanded a little bit but with the 400 grit between those coats and then I used some spray lacquer, uh, probably three or four coats of spray lacquer. This was a much more complicated and, and difficult board than the one I did earlier with porography. I'll have a link to that video in case you're interested, but, but I'm uh, happy with the outcome. Okay, now we turn our attention to the mahogany chess piece storage box. Uh, I resawed this uh, scrap of mahogany and then planed it down to a half an inch. 
The top is made out of some spalted uh, sycamore that I cut in, in half and made bookmark pieces. Um, here's an example of another piece of spalted, a little thinner, that I bookmatched and, and glued together. I got a lot of great tips on joinery and box making out of Dennis Friedman's uh, book as shown here. I've got that in my Amazon shop. I did a use a slot cutter on my uh, router table to cut a slot for the 332nds inch uh, plywood that I used. It was plywood that's used for uh, drawer bottoms and it worked fine. The slot for the spalted uh, top was made on my table saw uh, using a dado a bit and with several practice uh, slots. I made this uh, zero clearance top, if you will, and clamped it, clamped it down uh, for, for a better cut. After cutting the uh, slot on the uh, glued up top, I went ahead and used a roundover bit to round over the profile. When I assembled the box, I used the same jig I used on the uh, chessboard uh, to cut the miter slots. And then I glued in uh, little scraps of wood as, as shown here and then cut them off with a, a flush cut saw. Uh, I would made this box in one piece so then I cut the box lid off on the table saw. Afterwards uh, I used flocking which uh, I have a link to another video where I did a jewelry box with flocking but I flocked the inside to give it a nice velvet kind of, kind of coat. I mounted a little uh, finger uh, ground a little finger uh, grip lift area with my Dremel Dremel tool with with the drum. I added some brass hinges on the back and I'll probably add some magnets to keep the top kind of uh, down snugly. If your club is interested in having me do a demonstration for an inactive remote <laughs> if your club is interested in having me do a demonstration as part of an interactive remote uh, meeting Please have them, uh, one of the your program chair get in touch with me. I'd be very, very uh, excited and happy about doing that. You know the drill. Stay safe, and y'all come back here.